Rebecca Schaefer was a 21-year-old Oregon native who began modeling her junior year of high school at the age of 16. She initially had aspirations to become a high fashion model and moved to New York City in August of 1984. From there, Rebecca began auditioning for various catalog campaigns, television commercials, and even landed a short stint for the daytime soap opera Guiding Light. That same fall of 1984, Schaefer landed the role of Annie Barnes on the popular ABC soap opera One Life to Live. The acting role would last six months and gain her notoriety amongst various casting producers. During this time period, she attempted to further her modeling career, but at 5 foot 7 inches, she struggled to find work in the fashion industry. In 1985, Schaefer moved to Japan in the hope of finding more modeling opportunities, but encountered difficulty due to her height and weight. She returned to New York City and decided to focus on her acting career. In March of 1987, Rebecca appeared on the cover of Seventeen magazine. The cover caught the attention of casting producers for the new television comedy titled My Sister Sam. Schaefer won the role of Patricia Russell, a teenager who moves from Oregon to San Francisco to live with her 29-year-old sister Samantha after the death of their parents. The series was initially a hit and garnered Rebecca a devoted fan base. This was the big break Rebecca needed in order to begin a transition over to a career in movies. The series ranked among the top 25 shows for its targeted demographic, but was eventually canceled halfway through its second season due to low ratings. Schaefer was even rumored to be considered for the lead role in Pretty Woman, a role that eventually went on to be played by Julia Roberts and garnered the actress mega stardom. It was a little bit before this time in her life that Rebecca began receiving various gifts and letters from fans on the set of her show My Sister Sam. One fan letter in particular caught Rebecca's attention and prompted her to reply. She had no idea that she was responding to an obsessed stalker with a vast history of mental illness. The teenage fan's name was John Robert Bardo. Unbeknownst to Rebecca, Bardo had been stalking the actress in her television role on My Sister Sam in October of 1986. Bardo was a freshman in high school when he first saw Schaefer in a commercial for My Sister Sam in the summer of 1986. He felt that they were kindred spirits and had been sending her tokens of his delusional affection. He wrote her various fan letters expressing his love for the actress. Rebecca once responded with the message, Your letter is one of the nicest I got. Robert took this expression of gratitude as his cue to travel from Tucson, Arizona to Los Angeles to meet the actress in person. It's integral to the story to note that Bardo had recently seen Rebecca appear in a sex scene for the film, Scenes from the Class Struggle in Beverly Hills. He felt betrayed and boarded the bus to Los Angeles after procuring a gun from his older brother. Bardo was unable to obtain a gun on his own due to his history of mental illness. He had also paid a private investigator $300 to find out where Rebecca Schaefer lived. The PI obtained Rebecca's address from DMV Records. After arriving in Los Angeles, Bardot went to the Burbank studio where My Sister Sam was formally filmed. Bardot brought flowers and a teddy bear for Rebecca, but never made it through the security gate. Since the show had been canceled for over two years, security personnel assumed Bardot had an extreme crush when he came looking for Rebecca on set. I thought he was just lovesick, said the chief of security at the Burbank studios. He was terribly insistent on being let in. Rebecca Schaefer was every other word. I gotta see her, I love her, if I could just see her for a minute, Bardo said. Judy Crown, a hairstylist who worked on my sister Sam, recalled when letters and gifts would arrive on set. She would cautiously advise the actress to ignore the messages. She said, Rebecca, don't respond, just don't respond. I don't have a good feeling about this, and people are sometimes crazy, I think you should just ignore it. Bardo left the studio and scoured the Fairfax District neighborhood in West Hollywood where Schaefer allegedly lived. When he arrived at the address provided by the private investigator, Pardo asked a parked cab driver if Chafer's building was the apartment complex he was looking for. Pardo showed her a letter and autograph that she had previously sent him. After a short conversation, Rebecca asked Pardo not to come to her home again. Before he left, she said, please take care. Pardo was distraught and went to a nearby diner. 
had breakfast, then returned to Schaefer's apartment an hour later at around 10 a.m. On this particular morning of July 18, 1989, the 21-year-old actress was waiting for a delivery that could potentially change her life. Schaefer was scheduled to audition later that day for a prominent role in The Godfather Part 3. She was expecting the script to be dropped off at her West Hollywood apartment any minute before her initial interruption for bar dough earlier that morning. When the doorbell rang again at 10.15 a.m., Schaefer hesitantly went to see who it was. She saw Bardot and answered the door with a cold look on her face. Bardot claimed Schaefer said, You came to my door again. During his trial, Bardot claimed, It was like I was bothering her. I thought that was a very callous thing to say to a fan. Bardot then responded to Schaefer's comments and said, I forgot to give you something. That's when the 19-year-old fatally shot Rebecca Schaefer in the chest with the gun he brought from Arizona. Rebecca's only response and last known words were, Why? Why? And collapsed to the ground shortly thereafter. Witnesses recalled seeing Robert John Bardot on Rebecca's street showing random pedestrians her photo and asking if they knew her and where she lived. Not much later, neighbors heard a gunshot and screams with Bardot running up the street. She was lying on the ground, wearing nothing but a black robe, said a witnessing neighbor. Her eyes were open and staring. It looked to me as though she was already dead. After 30 minutes of arriving at the hospital, Rebecca Schaefer was pronounced dead at Cedar sinai Medical Center, less than a mile from her home. The following day, Tucson Police Chief Peter Ronstadt arrested Bardot after motorists reported a man running through traffic on Interstate 10 in Arizona. Bardot immediately confessed to the murder and officers contacted authorities in Los Angeles. He was identified by Rebecca's neighbor as the man they'd seen asking about Rebecca. The state prosecutor for the case and trial was Marsha Clark, who later became the lead prosecutor in the O.J. Simpson murder trial. Marsha Clark agreed not to seek the death penalty when Bardo waived his right to a jury trial. Bardo was housed in a sensitive needs unit for inmates convicted of sex crimes, gang members, and other notorious crimes. Bardo's attorney conceded that Bardo had murdered Schaefer but argued that he was mentally ill. Psychiatrist Park Dietz, testifying for the defense, said that Bardo had schizophrenia and that his illness led him to commit the murder. Bardot was convicted of capital murder in a bench trial and was found guilty of first-degree murder. He was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole by Superior Court Judge Dino Fulgani in October of 1991. Rebecca Schaefer's death marked the start of a national anti-stalking movement and prompted California to pass the first anti-stalking law ever in existence. The newly established law classified stalking as a punishable crime and is now upheld in every state in the United States. The Screen Actors Guild also got involved in lobbying the state to strengthen privacy protections. The state subsequently restricted the accessibility of personal information, such as home addresses from the DMV's public records. Congress passed the Driver's Privacy Protection Act in 1994 and required all states to follow suit. Gun control also became a buzzing hot topic and the My Sister Sam cast reunited for a public service announcement about gun violence in the honor of their deceased co-star. In July 27, 2007, Robert Bardot was stabbed 11 times on his way to breakfast in the Maximum Security Unit Prison Yard at Mule Creek State Prison in Amador County, California. Two inmate-made weapons were found at the scene. He was treated at the UC Davis Medical Center and returned to prison after his injuries were properly treated. As of 2019, Bardot is serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole at the Avenal State Prison in Avenal, California. 30 years have passed since Rebecca Schaefer's influential and untimely murder. This is the last known image taken of Rebecca. At the time of filming this video, the one life to live in My Sister Sam star would be 51 years old. We